Peoria Regional Championships is right around the corner, and it is the first 151 legal tournament. What should you expect from the metagame in Peoria if you're going? Let's take a look at the meta forecast. So in order to understand what will go on at Peoria, we need to take a step back to look at the last U.S. Regional Championship in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh saw Lost Variants take the top with Giratina, V-Star, and Lost Box being the two most played decks, followed by Maridon, Lugia, and Gardevoir. So we can see Comfy decks dominating the tournament for the most part, with some sleeper picks, I guess, such as Maridon sneaking its way through. Notably, Charizard didn't do extremely well at this event. If we look forward to future regionals and even to Kurachiba regionals, we see that Charizard EX took up five of the top eight slots, all of them being slightly different variants, but still the same archetype. So while the archetype hasn't been completely solved, Charizard has been doing extremely well, and it's very important to note that. And this was even before 151. With 151, Charizard's just going to get more popular because it gains access to the 70 HP Charmander. Now, this is a huge deal because it means that Lost Mine cannot kill two Charmanders or a Charmander and a Pidgey. Previously, Lost Box and Giratina could actually do pretty okay into Charizard because of their ability to just snipe out the little guys. In the Lost Box's case, even Echoing Horn one of them out and just do it again. So yeah, with the 70 HP Charmander, a lot of people are really hyping it up and I think it will be one of the more played decks for Peoria. Like everyone's been trying this guy out for cups and they've been doing well. You see it all over Twitter. People won the cup of Charizard. They got second at the cup of Charizard. Like people are trying out this deck and the new variants that came out of Kurachiba. And I think in a lot of people's minds, this is the deck to beat. This is the BDIF or number one deck. I don't know if it actually is that, but if everyone really believes that, then it's definitely going to be played in numbers. So rather recently, the hype kind of shifted away from Charizard into the Colorless Lugia archetype. So Colorless Lugia has been played a little bit over the past season, but hasn't really received any placings just because of its inferiority to Single Strike variant. And so it's always been inferior to the Single Strike variant just because Tyranitar can just swing for so much damage and Colorless can really only swing for one final blow at the end of the game with Weirdeer. Now with 151, we get Mewi X, which allows Colorless Lugia to one-shot Giratina V-Star earlier, gives it a shot against Charizard at the end of the game, and overall, just against a lot of different matchups, keep up with the prize trade without needing to get multiple Snorlaxes on the board. You can just slam a Mew and then maybe power up something else with your energies while getting the one-shot. So it definitely accelerates the game, and a deck like Giratina does not want the game to be accelerated. Giratina actually wants the game to be slower, so I can play Roxanne, Path to Defeat, cards like that. So yeah, a lot of people hyping Mew EX. Colorless Lugia also has, now it has really good matchups into everything. It doesn't really like hard lose to any tier one deck in the current metagame, but I think a lot of players are tending towards it also because Charizard, like now Colorless can, I guess, use Mew, maybe has the two-shot option with the Snorlax, whereas Single Strike can't really do a ton. It has to sh reshuffle in those Single Strike energies, can't really do the one prize exchange sort of thing, and it's just really hard for Tyranitar to take out a big Charizard. Again, I don't know how much better this is than Single Strike. I haven't tested it personally, but it seems pretty solid. And I think just because of the number of people that are talking about it, I think we can expect this to be one of the most played decks of the tournament for sure. Another really popular deck that I think will continue is Giratina V-Star. Now, this was one of the most played decks at Pittsburgh, and even going into that tournament, it was very much well played in online tournaments. The ability to do 280 damage on a 200 HP body with no weakness, while also having access to Sableye, Path to the Peak, Roxanne, Iono, like it just makes this deck really hard to directly counter. I say that, and then Mew EX comes out, and it just kind of one shots the Tina, right? By no means is Mew EX a direct counter to Tina, but it does make playing it on a surface level scary to a lot of players. Decks such as Colorless Lugia, which previously didn't have an extremely good matchup in Tina, now have pretty respectable matchups. I don't think that as many people who played Tina and hyped up Tina will be hyping up Tina now just because there's like other decks to focus the hype on. But I think the people who know how to play Tina, know how to sequence it, will know how to navigate through these difficult times, maybe with the Mew EX and stay calm and still find a way to win games. 
And of course, the deck just has a completely fine time with Charizard. Just being able to flip over your V-Star counter and one-shot the active Charizard makes it really, really tempting to play, especially when you know there's a lot of Charizard. Definitely, I think, will be the more played Lost variant of the two. Let's take a look at the other Lost variant, Lost Box. So on paper, it kind of looks a little bit scary to play, right? We have Carlos Lugia, we have Giratina, we have Charizard, all these decks with just super high HP Mons. Yes, we are out of the Arceus era where we don't really have to worry about Arceus V-Star and his friends, but we do have to worry about these other high HP creatures that we can't really deal with super easily with Lost Box. Now we do gain access to that Mew EX, which we can play in Lost Box to help out Giratina, maybe even Charizard. It also means that you don't necessarily have to get Water, Water, Lightning in matchups such as Maridon, where you're just going for two prize cards. You have a lot more flexibility. You can attach the Psychic Energies and still get a one shot with Mew that way. I think that people being scared to play Lost Box is a little bit off of the truth i think that the deck is still fine i think that the players who know how to play lost box will still play it and i think you can still pilot it to victory against these scarier decks such as charizard there are cards in the metagame to deal with charizard there's plenty of grass type pokemon i'm sure players will find and put into their decks but yeah like even if Charizard is the most popular deck. You're probably only going to hit like one or two of them anyways. So if you can just win the rest of your games, I mean, you're doing just fine. I also do want to mention Lost Box Kyogre because this was the most recent champion in the US for regional championships. I've played Kyogre a decent amount in this format and I think it's a little bit scary to play now, especially with Colorless Lugia, especially with Charizard EX having that Terra ability where you actually can't Aqua Storm onto it. Also because everyone kind of already knows what Kyogre does, kind of already is extremely aware of its existence, it's kind of hard to pull off an Aqua Storm where it just won original championships. Like, you should just already be expecting an Aqua Storm. Not to mention the deck is torture to play, so I don't think anyone's going to play it, but just thought I should mention. Maridon EX is also a very tempting pick for the regionals as it gains access to Zapdos EX, which is kind of a neat combo where you can Halucha and you can Zapdos for multiple prizes. I think this definitely does give it an edge into like Lost Box and some of the other decks where it might have had trouble because of its ability to take multiple prizes or just to force out the mana fee. If you're playing against Maridon, you kind of have to get out the mana fee or else you might just lose on the spot to the Zapdos. So even the threat of that alone might be enough for Maridon to win some games. It also looks good because Lugia decks are switching to colorless, and now Maridon doesn't have to deal with that Stan Jorner skewing the prize exchange. It, there's nothing really in colorless Lugia that can one-shot Maridon that's not a two-prizer. It also just has respectable matchups into everything, like you hit your generators, you swing for a bunch of damage early, that beats a lot of decks. With a lot of people like losing trust in Lost Box, it might be a pretty good pick, but you do still have to worry about Charizard. Obviously, that is always scary to see at the top. You just don't want to hit this if you're right out. It's just not a good time. Next, I do want to mention Mew VMAX. Now, it might seem extremely silly to play because of Charizard EX, but Mew does really well into like every other matchup. Like with Lugia switching to colorless, all of a sudden, now Mew is like, I don't have an Evil Tell to deal with. I don't have a Tyranitar to deal with. You can't one shot my Mew V Max unless you have a Weirder with like 5,000 energies. It's just not happening. So, like, if you can dodge Zard and just hit everything else, even if you hit Zard and they're playing like the Arceus variant, you could still win by swinging the Mellow at a turn one. And I think it's a pretty fine pick. Like, also, nobody runs Spear Tomb, and there are some path decks, but not a ton. And Mew can definitely dodge just path. Spear Tomb was just always the problem. But yeah, I don't think many people will play Mew. It'll probably be like nowhere in the top five for sure, but not to say it's a bad play. I think that people will still play Mew. Azul's group played Mew for Pittsburgh, even when Charizard was at its, you know, most hype with Obsidian Flames being legal first for that tournament, they still played Mew and their group did really well. So next, I do want to bring up a deck that actually got top eight of Kurachiba, Arceus Duraldon VMAX. Now, I haven't seen a ton of people talk about this, but that deck is not bad at all into this current metagame. I mean, it did pretty well at NAIC in a metagame full of Gardevoir and Lost Box just because Lost City, Duraldon, and Active have fun. But just all of this hype around like Colorless Lugia, Lugia in general, 
You stick a Duralda on the active, they can't do anything about it. Like you could run Path to the Peak and stuff in Lugia, but I cannot imagine a colorless Lugia player playing the Snorlaxes, playing the Therapeutic Energy, now playing the Mew EX. Even thinking like, okay, let me put a Path to the Peak for a deck, I maybe, maybe will hit one of. I think if you're trying to win the entire tournament with Lugia, there is a chance that you might hit an Arc Dura like in day two or something, but it's just so probably not worth it to tech for. I think Arc Dura could just, you can just have a bunch of free series. Like it's for the brave few because if you hit in the Tina, that's just a really bad time. Unlike NAIC though, Giratina V-Star is actually pretty high up in popularity. So if you just hit that as Arc Dura, you just kind of lose. Giratina does so well into Arceus stacks, just hit 280 on Arc and then knock out the Dura with the V-Star. You might see a couple people play it though, who knows? And the last deck, but certainly not the least I want to talk about, is Qian Pao. Now, of course, this is my favorite deck, and I actually think it is pretty well positioned into the Peoria metagame. So first of all, it has a really good matchup into both Charizard and Gardevoir. Against Charizard, you can just take two prizes before they can take two prizes. And then against Gardevoir, you just go so fast and you can even clone them. It's just really not a good time for Gardevoir. Its matchups against everything else are also extremely respectable. You can still win into Tina. I would say it's a little favorable in the Tina. You can still win against Lost Box. You can still win against a lot. Lugia playing colorless is also kind of nice because that means they're going to be going for like boss backs lines instead of actually keeping up with the prize trade like Single Strike would like to do because they also just can't keep up with the two prizes every single turn. They could hit it for Snorlax and then again, but they're using a lot more resources than Single Strike Lugia needs to keep up with the 2-2-2. I don't know how many people will play Chin Pao just because there is a lot of other options in the metagame, some without those Chin Poop hands, but I still think it is a pretty good pick and we could definitely see some Chin Pao players do well. But yeah, those are my predictions for the Peoria Regional Championships. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think this is an incredibly diverse metagame and I'm so happy to actually get to talk about so many different decks because this indicates a very healthy metagame and I think that any or all of these decks can do well in the tournament. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you all next time.